I'm here with Yanis Vorakis, a professor of economics at the University of Athens. Now, we've had some dramatic events here in the past few days, and in the next few hours, we expect George Papandreou, the prime minister, to announce a new cabinet to discuss these issues. Uh, Yanis, can Papandreou survive? He's calling a confidence vote. He's going to shake up his cabinet. I believe that the very simple answer is that uh, he's on his last legs. Uh, whatever credibility he had uh, after a very long year of uh, recession, uh, bailouts uh, and the debt crisis that has exploded, uh, he lost it yesterday with a farcical uh, performance which uh, now means that Greece is uh, effectively politically uh, in the mire and uh, both government and the opposition, unfortunately, uh, lack legitimacy. Uh, this is effectively what happens when the economy goes into meltdown. The political regime collapses with it. Why now? Why is he doing this now? Did he not have enough votes to get the midterm budget, the austerity program, through Parliament? He couldn't count on the members of Parliament of his own party, and he couldn't count on enough uh, members of the opposition crossing the floor to support uh, the package, which is effectively a fig leaf that would allow Germany, effectively, to uh, give the, the green light for the bailout number two. The tragedy is that it's not just a question of securing enough votes in Parliament in order to go ahead with this bailout number two. The tragedy is that even Europe itself uh, is not at all clear in its mind as to whether uh, this bailout number two is something it wants to go ahead with. Uh, Europe is dithering in Brussels as we speak. And it is my considered opinion that bailout number two would be completely catastrophic for both uh, the deficit countries like Greece and the surplus countries like Germany. And if with this political turmoil in Greece, is Europe going to give Greece another bailout? Do they have any confidence that the Greek government now can push through this latest round of austerity measures? Personally, I hope that they won't, because this bailout, like the first one, uh, is a slow motion accident uh, that we're all watching and which will lead the whole of the Eurozone into a terrible impasse. But I very much fear that uh, they have run out of ideas uh, in Brussels and in Frankfurt, and they will uh, foist upon Greece a loan that the Greek economy cannot maintain, it cannot service, under conditions that will shrink uh, Greece's GDP further, therefore ma making the crisis worse, uh, throwing good money after bad, and uh, creating the circumstances for the eventual dismantling of the euro system. Now, we're going to have a new cabinet announced later today. What do you see, who do you see in that cabinet, and is George Papaconstantino going to continue to be finance minister? Well, Miracles can happen, but I think that Papa Constantino remaining in the finance ministry would be to reward gross failure with uh, um, rewards that it doesn't deserve. Uh, I think that the problem with the current uh, cabinet, the, current, the cabinet that will be announced, is that not, any, not anyone I know is particularly interested to know who is in it, because it's already been discredited even before it has been established. It's a cabinet in transition before a new election. This cabinet will be condemned uh, in uh, the annals of history as a non-event. And just really briefly, will Greece default and will it happen soon, if it does happen? It, this depends entirely on the European Union. Either we're going to have a cascade of defaults in the euro system that would lead to the dismantling of the euro, beginning with Greece, or the, the European Union is going to decide at long last that it has to face the, the, the crisis uh, straight in the eyes and deal with a banking sector crisis that nobody's talking about, unify part of the debt, sovereign debt, uh, in other words, the structure of the whole of the European debt, and reform its architecture. Right. Thank